founded in 1630, Medford, Massachusetts, one of the oldest cities in the Commonwealth, is home to nearly 60,000 people in a diverse urban community. I'm Jenny Johnson for Comcast Newsmakers at Suffolk University's Modern Theater in downtown Boston. Newly sworn in Medford Mayor Stephanie M. Burke joins Newsmakers. Welcome to the program, Welcome, Mayor. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you so much for having me Thank tonight. you for being here. Now, you are the former Budget and Personnel Director of Medford. Mm -hmm. So, do you feel satisfied with the current state of the city? Well, it's a comfortable place to be because I do understand how the budget process works, which is one of the most important elements to a community, uh, the backbone, basically, of the community. So I have a strong understanding of how everything works within the building. So it, it's making for an easier transition, I think, than someone that would come on someone brand new to the city. Okay, now in your inaugural address you talked mm -hmm. about fostering vibrancy in business. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts and do you have specific ideas about economic development strategies? Absolutely. I think Medford's one of those communities that has so much potential mm -hmm. that's untapped at this point. So it's an it's a ripe opportunity for us to um, investigate opportunities in Medford Square especially. Um, it's been underutilized with several city-owned parking lots that could that are ready to go pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to be taking some of the old plans off the shelf, dusting them off, upgrading them for newer issues like complete streets that are so important in many of the communities around Boston and bringing that element into the plan so that when we do it, we do it right and uh, really love for the, the river, so really uh, hug it, mm -hmm. if, if I could say that. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, you've appointed a transition team, which will obviously mm -hmm. be very helpful to advance arts, culture, and recreation. So these are places that I'm guessing you're hoping to strengthen Medford. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I actually have three transition teams that are in process right now. One is constituent to see how are we doing things, how can we do it better from the flow of information from me to you and you to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's several elements that we could bring into place at the end of this transition period and it will lay the roadmap for how our administration will operate in the future. But with that being said, we also have the economic development piece, which is critical. Um, you know, getting back to Medford Square, but if you know Medford, we have several smaller squares that are, are scattered about. So they all are very unique uh, from a diversity perspective mm -hmm. and the shop owners are very different. So we really need to pay attention to the uniqueness of each square and specialize how we want to treat them. And how about the arts and culture moving forward? We have a beautiful theater similar to the one you're in today, only it holds probably about 2,000 people, uh, the Chevalier Theater. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a resource in our community that could really provide economic development right in Medford Square. It's basically on Forest Street, which leads into the heart of our square. So we need to develop a business plan for that. It's city-owned property. Uh, we need to get a management company in and really push that because once that happens, then the restaurants all have the overflow, the people that come out. Uh, so it'll be an impetus to getting Medford Square up and running and really creating a nightlife. If you walk the streets right now, it's pretty, um, mm -hmm. there's just not a lot happening after a certain hour. So if we develop the city parcels, bring people to live there and then develop the Chevalier as another bookend, then you're going to bring people to the square and then that'll bring the businesses. So, so much to offer. It's exciting, very exciting in our community. Uh, let's talk about communication. You've addressed how important communication is to and from citizens. Mm -hmm. So how are you offering to sort of better communicate with your constituents? Well, there's little things. Uh, voicemail, for example. Uh, City Hall has never had voicemail. And it, it's wonderful to have the personal touch but everybody is moving so fast and offices are so streamlined that you need to have that extra, extra element just right. to give someone time to finish their job. Uh, websites, having them interactive, um, the forms, being able to be fillable. It's real simple things that make people's lives easier. I know that I go to the web for most of the business that I do and that's my first stop before making a phone call. Right. So we really need to streamline how you get a business permit, how, how do you open up a restaurant, what are the steps you need to go through. So I think we're spending some attention on that with our transition teams and my, my staff as well to try and think how the outsider looks in. Uh, so that's how we're trying to approach it. Okay, so give me a status check on mm -hmm. the Green Line extension that is oh. regularly talked about in regards to Medford. Well, as you know um, from the state, uh, they the budget came in basically at a billion dollars. Uh, the actual the estimates came in a billion dollars over what they had budgeted for the project. So it has caused the 
Department of Transportation as well as the T to take a step back, which is a wise decision at this point to relook. Can we do things differently? Can we refine the stations to right. save some money? Because basically they need to bridge the cost down and the revenue up so that they can match that so that we can get it built. Uh, we're eager to have it come to the Hillside area where Tufts University is and then to 16. It would be a, a really um, efficient yeah. um, environmental mm -hmm. uh, economic development opportunities along the, the line would be just uh, would be a great thing to have in Medford. So you'll, and keep that, you'll keep that as it's a front focus. and center and I've attended some of the DOT meetings just so that they know that we're serious about it and we're committed to seeing it come to fruition. So we're working with the state delegation, federal delegation, uh, represent Congressman Capuano has been mm -hmm. fabulous at this. Um, all, all of our senators, um, Warren and uh, Markey as well. So they know it's important to us and it's important to them. So we just need to keep keep straight and get this right. So now, Mayor, I know it's early on in your mm -hmm. administration, but tell the people watching how your experience has prepared for you to sort of take the reins after a, a long-term incumbent. Well, I was a, almost 16 years as a city councilor, and then I served four years uh, with Mayor McGlynn. So I was able to see how he was able to get things done through partnerships and collaboration. So to be right part of that circle, you get to see a lot and you get to meet a lot of the people that you have to deal with in order to move your city forward. And also you get to see what works and what doesn't work. So I'm able to bring in a lot of the ways that were successful along mm -hmm. with new ideas from private sector, which is really my background is private sector finance. So marrying the two together I think will be a nice um, We'll have a nice honeymoon period here. Wonderful. Well, <laughs> Mayor, thanks so much for coming. We look forward to seeing all that you'll be doing in Medford. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Jenny. Nice it's to pleasure. meet you. Thank thanks you. for watching Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Jenny Johnson.